Welcome to the second in this online series introducing some of the objects in York Minster's collection. These objects contribute to the telling of the Christian story, one of love, courage and hope, of light shining in darkness, and of new life emerging out of death, destruction and disaster. Here's my colleague, Dr Helen Rawson, Head of Heritage, to present this week's object. This beautiful processional banner shows the crucifixion of Christ. On either side of the cross stand Saint Mary and Saint John. The expression on the faces of the figures is sorrowful but serene. Around the borders of the banner are flowers and foliage, interspersed with instruments of the Passion, including the crown of thorns and the spear used to pierce Christ's side. Along the lower edge are the arms of the City of York and the Diocese of York. The banner has been designed in simple but striking colours, with the contrast between the gold, red and deep blue highlighting the scene. It is made of rich fabrics, silks and damasks and rich velvet, finely embroidered. The treatment and conservation of the banner tells of its active life in the service of the church. It was presented to the Dean and Chapter of York Minster by C.M. Forbes in 1916, during the First World War. It was designed by Sir William Tapper, and John Charles Pusey and produced by the firm of Watson Company. When, after many years of use, it required restoration in the 1980s, it was returned to Watson Company for this to be carried out. Within the banner was discovered a piece of linen bearing the signatures of the original people who had worked on it, of special interest to Watson Co because their records had been destroyed by bombing in the Second World War. A further restoration came after a banner pole broke at Christmas 1993. The poles were replaced by metal ones. The wooden finials were gilded by the stone yard and the poles and crossbar were covered in new silk velvet purchased from Watts by Betty Starry, the vestment keeper. The banner therefore has different layers of meaning and importance. It is a finely crafted object with religious significance which in its creation and use tells us of the people and life of York Minster. I once walked around the Minster trying to count up how many crucifixes were on display. There were dozens of them. Once I actually started looking for them intentionally, they seemed to be everywhere. So familiar a symbol is it, though, that for much of the time it barely registers in our field of vision. Yet the church, both as building and as community, has the cross stamped right through it. Like many churches, the Minster is cruciform in shape. Similarly, all who are baptised are marked with the sign of the cross. This processional banner has a biblical scene as its inspiration. Scenes of the crucifixion are often portrayed with Jesus on the central cross and two bandits, one on either side, as is recounted in all four Gospels. Only in the Gospel of John, though, do we find an account of what we see in this banner. Not only Jesus and two criminals, but Jesus with his mother Mary, and the one referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved, standing either side of him. It scarcely bears imagining what Mary must have been going through as she watched her son die. All the love she'd had for him since before he was even born. All the love with which she'd nurtured him through his childhood and adolescence. All the love with which she'd stood by and supported him during his adulthood and active ministry must now have been aching and bursting with sorrow and sadness. The beauty of the tableau seen in this banner is that it invites us to see that all the love she'd lavished on him from the outset was not now being mocked and trampled on, but fulfilled. Here on the cross, in the midst of unbearable pain, Jesus reaches out to the two people he loves most to console them with the love and compassion he'd learned from his mother and supremely from the one he knew intimately in the depths of his being, the one he called Father. From within his own suffering, Jesus reaches out to his mother and his friend to draw them into an even deeper relationship of love and support, to discover the love they knew in him to be the love in them too. In this act of drawing people together in love and compassion, Jesus shows what the church is to be, a community based not on the origins of birth, but on an all-embracing and all-inclusive love grounded in God. 
During the time of this global pandemic, many are discovering afresh the nature of this love. Families and friends are uppermost in the hearts and minds of all of us, of course, but in the actions and attitudes of key workers on the front line, whether in hospitals or supermarkets, in the government or in food banks, we are seeing extraordinary examples of selflessness and self-sacrifice transcending family relationships alone, born of a compassionate desire for the good, health and well-being of others. We're becoming aware, almost as if never before, that we exist not as isolated individuals, but as a worldwide community in a global network of relationships called to serve one another in love and compassion. Even in the scene of crucifixion depicted on this processional banner, the Easter truth is present if we look for it. Selfless, compassionate love lies in the very heart of God, as it does in all human beings, created in the image and likeness of that same God. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the tender and compassionate reaching out of Jesus on the cross to his mother and friend in their mutual suffering, you revealed your own heart of love for all. As we thank you for the signs of this love seen in so many acts of kindness, generosity and self-sacrifice at this time, enable us all to grow in this love day by day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.